Hi, you're on a rock floating in space. Pretty cool, huh? Some of it's air. Actually, most of it's air. I can't even get from here to there without building a bridge. It's sad. I'm sad. I miss you. On September 5th, 2011, a player named Noob Crew released a map to the Minecraft forums. It was very simple, a small island with a single tree above the limitless void. He called it Skyblock. Millions of players downloaded the map and many played with friends. Some even made series from this and uploaded them to YouTube. More than seven years later, on June 11th, 2019, Minecraft's biggest multiplayer server, Hypixel, released their own take on the game mode. In the past four years, tens of millions of people have found joy from that version of Skyblock. My name is Sudi and welcome as we explore the incredible evolution of Minecraft's most popular minigame. From the race to collect 500 million potatoes to the game's most insane accomplishments. This is the complete history of Hypixel Skyblock. If you joined Hypixel in the summer of 2019 and clicked on the new Skyblock icon, you would be taken to a small island in the sky made of grass and stone with one tree on it. Looking across the void, you'd notice another stone island with a big portal. You could join up with your friends in co-ops to work together, and after breaking some logs, you may notice your oak collection increase. Tons of different items on Skyblock have collections, which track how much of that specific resource each player has collected while they've played the game. As people increase their collections, they are able to unlock different trades and recipes. Once you make a crafting table and cross the void, you'll be standing next to a guide NPC and a cobblestone minion that mines cobble forever. The minion can be upgraded for faster output, larger storage, and each new minion crafted helps you unlock more minion slots. Now it's time to enter the portal. Doing this unlocks a whole new world, the Skyblock Hub. This place is massive. There are NPC shops left and right that are buying and selling items for coins, an auction house to put up your own stuff and purchase items from other players, and a bank to store your coins so you don't lose them if you die. If you choose to run to the farm area and gather some wheat, you'll see your wheat collection increase as well as your farming skill. Beyond collections, Skyblock has a number of skills including combat, farming, foraging, fishing, mining, and alchemy, each giving extra bonuses to health, defense, strength, and intelligence. Two days after its initial release to ranked players, Skyblock was open to everybody. At the same time, the Hypixel development team fixed a ton of bugs that had been discovered during the ranked trial period. One day later, Technoblade uploaded the Hypixel Skyblock experience, a video detailing his journey in the early game of Skyblock. Techno took note of the finite nature of regular vanilla Skyblock and compared it to the unlimited resources of Hypixel's version. He journeyed to the gold mine then ventured down to the deep caverns. There, Techno benefited from the generosity of other players who helped him get full lapis armor. As he explored further, he was able to equip himself with hardened diamond armor as well. It should be pretty clear by now that Hypixel Skyblock has a number of features that aren't present in vanilla Minecraft. Some of those features include enchanting that goes all the way to level 50 and reforges that provide extra buffs. Hypixel Skyblock is thus a Minecraft-based game with elements similar to MMORPGs like World of Warcraft or RuneScape. These games include a lot of grinding, which Skyblock players are no stranger to. As Technoblade questioned, Is this really what I wanted to do with my life? stare at my monitor until meaningless numbers increase. Disregarding that existential dread, Technoblade's The Hypixel Skyblock Experience now sits at almost 28 million views and attracted thousands and thousands of players to the game. Also, instantly after releasing, Skyblock became Hypixel's most popular game mode by a long shot, with tens of thousands of players online at any given moment. While Technoblade observed the kindness of Skyblock players, 
that wasn't the case everywhere. Very early on, some people realized they could use fishing rods to move other players around. This was actually used to push people into the void and lava, causing them to lose half of the coins in their purse every time they died. Each Skyblock player has a certain amount of health, defense strength, speed, crit chance, crit damage, and intelligence. These stats can be increased with skill levels, armor and weapon buffs, as well as fairy souls. After talking to Tia the fairy and finding fairy souls hidden throughout Skyblock, players are rewarded with extra health, strength, and defense. As the original ace said, All of the fairies died in the most inconvenient locations possible. And then you mine Got this it. wall and you grab it through the wall That's there. like- Oh yeah, where I suspected it would be, exactly. So the YouTuber Time Dio created an hour long guide for exactly this on June 17th. The next day, Technoblade uploaded his second Skyblock video where he entered the Blazing Fortress and fought the Magma boss. Techno got super lucky because he managed to snag the one rare piece of loot from the boss, the Ember Rod. I got it! I actually got it! Yes! See you losers! So long, Bill Nye, idiot! <laughs> This is an exclusive weapon that shoots fireballs that could break blocks, including chests. While gunning for that loot, Techno had multiple factors working against him, because there were dozens of players hoping to get the Ember Rod for themselves. Plus, the Magma Boss only spawned every two hours per lobby. Since the Ember Rod was the best weapon in the game and thus super popular, many Skyblock players actually lost items because they accidentally blew up their own chests. To combat this, on June 22nd, a coder named Named Biscuit released a new mod called Skyblock Add-ons, or SBA. Biscuit showcased three quality of life changes the mod brought. The first made it so ember rods were blocked from shooting fireballs in front of chests. Secondly, SBA had a timer for the magma boss. The third addition was a drop confirm feature to prevent players from accidentally hitting their drop key and tossing out valuable items. Skyblock updates 0.3 and 0.4 were dropped in the following week, in which the admins balanced certain items and fix tons of bugs. The next big patch was the 0.5 fishing update released on July 2nd. This totally revamped how fishing worked with brand new sea creatures and bosses that could be fished up as well as tons of different loot. This update also added more than 60 new achievements and the secret dark auction. The dark auction wasn't advertised at all in the update patch notes but players figured out that an NPC named Sirius spawned at a specific location at a specific time. Clicking him took people to a secret auction where valuable items are sold, including level 6 enchants, the ender artifact, and the Midas sword, which deals more damage the more you spend on it. The most important part of the fishing updates actually occurred back at everyone's home islands. The guide NPC was renamed to Jerry. Just a week later, Time Dio uploaded another video detailing how his island became the first to reach the bank account limit of 50 50 million coins. They did this with an incredibly efficient method of grinding out ember rods and then selling them on the auction house. Dio's co-op figured out how to deal enough damage to kill the magma boss in a single hit, so they entered lobbies right before the boss spawned, killed it, grabbed the ember rod, and then sold them for a profit. Time Dio got rich off of this, but of course if you were standing in the lobby waiting for half an hour or more, prepared to fight a boss that only spawns every two hours, only for some schmuck to join, kill it, and get all the loot within seconds, you probably wouldn't be happy. On that same day, when Time Dio uploaded his 50 million coin flex video, update 0.6 was released. This reworked the magma boss, and now the loot was based on how much damage different people did and allowed multiple people to get loot from one single boss. This update also let players visit each other's islands, added teleport pads to get from place to place within islands, brought hot potato books to add extra extra buffs to weapons, plus 20 damage, as well as new enchants, drop protection, and collection leaderboards. Players could now see where they stood in any given collection, and their exact ranking if they were within the top 1,000 players. One of the new enchants added in this update is called Telekinesis, which brings loot from 
from killing mobs or mining blocks directly into players' inventories instead of dropping it onto the ground. On July 17th, Time Dio was messaged by an anonymous player who told him about a secret glitched item only accessible through the dark auction. Dio followed the instructions and used a sword called the Aspect of the End to teleport out of the dark auction area. For a while, it was actually possible to mine the blocks in dark auction lobbies, so Dio ran over to the NPC shops and used an axe with telekinesis to mine the barriers there. This caused fundamental issues with the way Minecraft worked. It heralded insane visual glitches with people's clients and could even crash anyone's Minecraft client if they were playing on a version below 1.14. 10 days after Time Dio got his hands on these banners, Dan TDM joined the game and put a water bottle on the auction house, which sold for 15 million coins. Skyblock players then started to describe the donations fans make to YouTubers as contraband, and it was looked down upon. At the same time this was happening, another way smaller creator named Freddy was uploading videos where he showcased various strange exploits within Skyblock. These included a method to move Jerry to the Blazing Fortress and move minions around in minecarts. Freddy even showed a way to duplicate collections. Collection dupes are incredibly powerful because they allow anyone to unlock the crafting recipes and even get onto the leaderboards of any collection within minutes. Even with a collection dupe, players still needed to play the game, and doing that required a lot more skill when the next update dropped. Skyblock's skill progression was brought into high gear with the release of the 0.7 End Island. This update, which came out on August 2nd, added an entire new island in infested with endermen, possessing crazy amounts of health. Killing them has the chance to drop ender armor, which has the full set bonus of doubling all stats and refinements while in the end. The new shiny blocks in the end stone that have the chance of giving valuable loot or even straight up cash made the end island the best place to be. Venturing further down, though, brings people to the gates of what was the most dangerous place in all of Skyblock. The Dragon's Den. In the Dragon's Den, zealots spawned with 13,000 health and had a rare chance of holding an end portal. When killed, those endermen dropped a summoning eye, eight of which put together will spawn a dragon. Players' likelihood of receiving good loot from dragons increases the more eyes they place, but it's very difficult to even make your money back if you place eight eyes. Consequently, Skyblockers teamed up to fight dragons, which come in seven varieties. Protector, Old, wise, unstable, young, strong, and superior. On top of placing summoning eyes, the more damage someone deals to the dragon directly correlates to getting better loot. This could be a piece of armor or dragon armor fragments, which when combined together can craft those armor pieces. Dragon armor and frags are specific to each dragon, but every dragon type has the chance to drop the aspect of the dragons, one of the most powerful swords in the game. Because more loot comes from higher damage, the Skyblock meta shifted to focus on maximum damage possible. There are several ways to do this, such as getting specific reforges on your armor, weapons, and talismans, and even getting a higher combat level, with combat 50 being the max. The top damage can only be done with all this and potions, which can give buffs to strength and crit damage. That being said, brewing the max level of the best potions in the game is both time consuming and quite expensive, but the free market had an answer. God Splash. Splash guilds, discords, and entire communities cropped up around the single question of maxed out potions. One player brewed the potions, sending them back a couple million coins, and then splashed them all on a massive party with dozens of people. Everyone in the party paid a nominal fee to be on the receiving end of the potion splashes, which covered the cost of the materials and then some for the brewer. Consequently, running a god splash server was actually a pretty decent money making method if you had enough people willing to pay. With all of this, players were finally prepared to fight dragons, as long as they didn't forget their runin's bow, which was the strongest range weapon in the game. Each dragon has different stats, buffs, and abilities that are reflected in the armor they drop, and it didn't take long before the Skyblock community figured out which dragon loot was good and which was trash. Most dragons usually netted a loss because of the cost of summoning eyes. Wise, unstable, and strong were more likely to bring in some profit, but one dragon took the title above the rest, Superior. The Superior
fear your dragon is by far the rarest dragon to encounter, but its armor has the greatest buffs around. As a result, superior dragon armor became the most sought after armor in the game, with its full set bonus increasing stats even further and buffing the aspect of the dragon ability. That being so, the race to get the first full superior set began. Just four days after the end island was released, two players got full superior armor, and it's unclear who got there first. Their names were Mind Tricks and Mo2315. One day later, another player called Iceblades11 got the third full set. Even though we don't know who had the set earlier, Mind Tricks or Mo, there were no hard feelings. In fact, the two of them, as well as Menacing Banana and a couple other players, created a guild called First Place Frags, or FPF. FPF had very strict requirements and denied entry to everyone but the richest and most skilled players in the game. They were dedicated to dragon fighting, and their name is an homage to the very real situation of dropping only fragments while getting the highest score in damage. Dragons were potentially profitable, but they required tons and tons of summoning eyes to do. As a result, strategies were developed to farm zealots most efficiently, and that required dealing 13,000 damage per hit to begin with. Crit chance is the stat that tracks the percentage chance of dealing a critical hit, so getting that to 100% is critical. When dealing a critical hit over 13k damage every time, players could then focus on other buffs like speed and mobility. The wise dragon armor set gives intelligence, which provides a lot of mana. Mana is the energy required to perform certain magic abilities, and as such, the zealot farming strat required a full wise set with an aspect of the end and rogue sword so that players could zip zap zop around the map killing zealots at Mach 10. With the new meta being entirely focused on damage, a couple rich skyblockers including Time Dio went to the dark auction and bid the absolute maximum amount on the Midas sword, 50 million coins. With that huge investment, the Midas sword became the most powerful sword in the game, launching a new meta where you had to be willing to drop all those coins just to deal slightly more damage. Honestly, that's every meta on Skyblock. Measly stat increases requiring hours and hours of work or El Dorado levels of gold. This also coincided with the rising meta of killing dragons with melee weapons. Whenever the dragons stop for attacks, people realized they could use their aspect of the end swords to teleport to them and deal tons of damage with swords. For some reason, dragon's health went down way slower than the supposed damage dealt as shown on the right, but this was still the most effective strategy for dragon farming. Since the aspect of the end sword was one of the most useful items in the game, and the aspect of the dragons one of the strongest, the up and coming YouTuber Tommy Init joked that there should also be a sword called the aspect of the Jerry, named for the guide NPC on each player's island. Not even two weeks into September, Hypixel made this joke a reality in the 0.7.1 update. With the aspect of the Jerry now being craftable, Palika spent a million coins maxing it out with every top enchant and reforge in the game. Bank upgrades were added exactly one month later for the players who are rich enough to pass the 50 million coin bank cap. More importantly though, this update added Slayer Quests. Slayer Quests are boss challenges where a certain number of mob kills are required to summon the boss. These quests come in three varieties, the Revenant Horror, Sven Packmaster, and Tarantula Broodfather, with each Slayer having four tiers. Progressing to a higher Slayer level unlocks crafting recipes and stat buffs and the bosses have the chance to drop expensive loot like the Scythe Blade from Revenants and the Overflux Capacitor from the Sven Packmasters. Because Slayers are strong enemies that deal a lot of damage, some people wondered if it was possible to bring a Slayer to the Dark Auction where unprepared players would be loitering with millions of coins in their purses. The only way this might be done would be to spawn a Slayer in that spot, but that would require killing the last mob outside of the Dark Auction where no mobs spawn. Zombies won't follow you that far, but someone realized that the Seawalker mini boss found while fishing is technically a zombie and contributes towards Slayer progression. Thus, Seawalkers were brought over to the Dark Auction and killed to spawn in Slayer bosses, causing several people to lose tons of coins. Seawalkers were quickly changed and they will now totally avoid following people to that area. A week later, the YouTuber 30Virus started a solo Skyblock series, which had the rule of 
no contraband. With this, his viewers were able to see how far he could actually progress without the assistance of rich donors offering millions of coins for free. Two days after that, the open source Sky Liam Mo website was released by Leofant that showcases anyone's Skyblock stats. It'll also show people's inventory and ender chest if they have their API settings set to public. If the API settings are private, then only skill levels can be viewed. On October 24th, the 0.7.3 spooky event update dropped, an event that occurs every Skyblock year, which is 5 days and 4 hours in real life. That's the equivalent of 372 Minecraft days, and this allows everything to rotate so that each time zone can access the events at some point. The spooky festival, announced just in time for Halloween, is a 1 hour event where monsters on public islands drop either green or purple candies, giving points. When the 60 minutes have passed, the top 5,000 point earners are given awards with the exclusive skeleton horse pet given to those at the top. At the same time, the admins changed the way that summoning eyes dropped. Previously, zealots had the chance of spawning with a portal frame, indicating that they'd give an eye. Now, killing a zealot has a small chance of spawning a special zealot nearby that has a couple seconds of drop priority. This means that the player who spawned the zealot is the only one who can pick up the summoning eye for that time period, preventing people from having their eyes stolen. About two weeks later, the players Squeeze Lord and Bean GG became the first players to hit combat 50, maxing out their damage. They likely accomplished this by killing ghasts on their islands using the vampire mask, and across Skyblock history, there have been tons of competitions racing to be the first person to hit max skill level or number one in a certain collection. The most well-known example of this is Technoblade's Potato War, the video for which he released on November 13th. In this narrative masterpiece, Techno tells the story of overtaking I'm a Squid Kid to reach the number one potato collection using all kinds of tactics, trickery, and sabotage to get there. Techno used some AFK strategies to get ahead in the war, something that's totally within the Hypixel rules. What's not okay though is AFK macroing, which the YouTuber Tabor was banned for two days after Techno uploaded that video. Macroing is the act of using an external program to provide inputs into the game that give it an unfair advantage. Essentially, macros are cheats that get players to play without playing. No physical person has to be in front of the computer for their account to progress in the game. Because of all the hype around max damage and getting to combat 50, Tabor installed a macro to automatically farm ghasts. He got caught, banned, and lost his YouTube rank for 6 months. Of course, Tabor wasn't the only player to macro ghasts, as it was a pretty common method to get combat XP, but he's definitely the most well-known person who's been caught doing it. There were definitely a lot of AFK methods to get ahead, and not just in skill XP. On November 22nd, It's Pricks uploaded a video showcasing a method to AFK close to 10 million coins per day. The Raider's Axe gives extra coins whenever something is killed with it, and Pricks demonstrated the sheer number of coins generated with a Raider's Axe in combination with Tarantula minions and Unstable Dragon Armor. The Unstable Armor shoots lightning that damages nearby mobs, so when those mobs were killed, Pricks profited with the Raider's Axe. The price of unstable armor shot through the roof because of this video, but the admins deemed the method too overpowered and disabled the unstable lightning effect in private islands. Risky players could technically still do the method with macros, but those were in a stage of infancy. However, things got really advanced when a skilled coder named Blitz created a script for cobblestone. This script automatically bought items from the NPC shop, crafted them into enchanted cobblestone, and repeated this over and over again, with no player input required. The script was able to generate millions of coins per day, and was one of the first methods of illegal coin generation that coincided with IRL trading. IRL trading is the practice of buying and selling Skyblock coins for real life money, which is very illegal on Hypixel. For a long time though, this wasn't enforced, and no one got banned for it. Speaking of rule breaking that no one gets banned for, trolling or harassment. When Timedio went to the dark auction with the intention of paying 50 million coins for a flower minion worth way less than 50 million coins, he panicked and only paid around 40 because his inventory was filling up with boats. 
Dio realized if he won the auction while his inventory was full, it was quite likely that the flower minion would drop onto the ground and he wouldn't get it. So on December 3rd, Hypixel added the item filter to prevent this boat spam, which was good, but trolls still visited people's islands and used a drop glitch to fill their hoppers instead. You can't win with Skyblock players. Around this time, 30 Virus was streaming and demonstrated an anti-knockback exploit involving the slime hat. Anti-knockback is a perk of the slime hat, but the glitch allowed players to get that effect while wearing another helmet. This anti-KB made killing Slayer bosses significantly easier, and the slime hat bug caused some major problems down the line. In anticipation of Christmas, the 0.7.5 patch brought with it the Winter Island on December 18th. This was a holiday themed event where players could earn gifts that have the chance to drop tons of different items, including snow minions and skill XP boost potions. These potions made skill grinding 20% faster at the max tier, but skill grinding could be totally cheesed with collection dupes. That's exactly what happened towards the end of the month when a method to duplicate collection and skill XP was discovered and leaked to the public. Many of these collection dupes involve unconventionally breaking chests, which drops those items to the ground. When the player picks the items up, the game thinks that they were earned legitimately and thus awards collection points, despite the fact that they may have just bought them from the auction house minutes earlier. This specific method involved bed explosions, which could only be done if a biome stick was used to create one block of nether and one block of end on a personal island. With the bed in both the nether and the end, it could explode. The dupe was leaked and abused by many top players before it was patched, and several people actually used it during the spooky event to get free candy. Situations where players abuse dupes and exploits without getting caught were pretty common, especially among the upper echelon of the game. The most striking example of this is the First Place Frags Guild, which became notorious for harboring cheaters and exploiters. In response to this, the player Live Broadcast created a new guild called Trouble Brewing on December 23rd. Trouble Brewing recruited the legit refugees from first place frags, those players who didn't want to associate themselves with the illegal activities of their former guild. With the tens of thousands of players on Skyblock at any given moment, there are all kinds of criminal activities that take place. For instance, just a day after Trouble Brewing was created, the 6-3rd bank collapsed, and millions of coins worth of enchanted diamond blocks were stolen from different investors. The leaders of this bank, <clears throat> Pyramid Scheme, convinced people if they invested some of their money, they could have a 12% return each season. The bank managers promised to invest the money themselves, profit, and pay those dividends to the investors. However, what was actually happening is players were being paid with the investments of other people. As long as more and more players were joining the bank, they had enough money to convince those who were getting the 12% that everything was legit. Like all all pyramid schemes, at some point it collapsed. Tons of investors had their money stolen, but one bank manager named Automatic Killer campaigned to refund the victims. He diligently worked to do exactly that with his own money and donations, and was actually successful within 40 days of the collapse. This is the rare case where a Skyblock scam actually has a happy ending. As the new year of 2020 came around, the slime hat bug was supposedly fixed. On January 9th, many made a post saying fixed armor stacking bug and removed skeleton horse pet from players who exploited private island bed bug. Evidently the people who abused the bed explosion collection dupe during the spooky festival had won but they had their rewards taken away. A couple weeks later someone named Jamero started grinding for skill average 50, a feat which had never been done before. While there were players who reached level 50 in a single skill like combat, no one had gotten the level 50 in all of them. This grind would require hundreds of hours of unwavering dedication, and the Skyblock community doubted if it could even be done. We'll check back with Jamero later. The next day, the admin Don Pireso posted changes to Skyblock rules on the forums, where he clarified what players are and aren't allowed to do. In the same post, Don Pireso also reflected on the six months of Skyblock, noting that more than 3.6 million unique players had joined the game mode, and 
almost half of them had maxed out at least one collection. It's pretty crazy to think that many people were invested in Skyblock enough to max out a collection. The post also addressed the alarming increase of cases where players had their entire accounts stolen. And so Don Piresso discussed the possibilities of two-factor authentication on Hypixel. 2FA would prevent people from having their hard work stolen with mods that are laced with malicious code, but it would be too complicated for Hypixel to do themselves. Ultimately, the responsibility of keeping accounts secure lies with the account owner and Mojang. On January 28th, Nolzy uploaded a video where he used auction flipping to get from a dirt block all the way to an aspect of the dragon sword, which cost around 6 million coins back then. This video went pretty viral and sits at nearly a million views, likely because it showed the possibilities of getting rich with auction flipping. About a week later, the admins rolled out a patch that tried to fix the slime hat bug again, but actually caused an exploit that was far worse. The patch made it possible for players to right-click backpacks directly onto their heads, something you can do in normal Minecraft with helmets. When done with the backpack, the GUI opened, but the backpack was on the player's head, effectively disappearing from their inventory. The YouTuber Pigacle went around telling people that they should take their helmets off and open their backpacks because it would dupe. He was trying to troll, making people think that they had deleted their backpacks, but what Pig didn't realize is this was a legitimate duplication glitch. The GUI would open, but the backpack was no longer in players' inventories. As a result, anything could be taken out, and then when the backpack was taken off the head, it would be as if nothing changed at all. Due to spreading a duplication glitch, Pigacle was banned from Skyblock for a week and lost his YouTube rank for a month. On February 21st, the Traveling Zoo event was added in the 0.7.6 pets update. This brought with it tons of new pets that give unique buffs and several quality of life changes. Those include the ability to trade coins directly to other players and to do some quick crafting. The Traveling Zoo event sells some exotic pets, but a bug occurred where, rather than spawn in the hub, the Traveling Zoo spawned on every single person's private island. This included the banners and everything. Suddenly, Time Dio's Dark Auction banners lost most of their value since every player effectively had access to those items that could overload the game with exploits. Because of how dangerous those banners are, the admins had to wipe them all. Dio was able to place his down before that patch rolled out, and those banners are still visible on his island today. Since this was the pets update, one of the new pets added was the Ender Dragon, which made it possible to outdamage the 50 million coin Midas sword as the Ender Dragon pet buffs damage from the aspect of the dragons. In late February, one of the most powerful exploits in Minecraft history was abused. Iceblades11 was live streaming when he was suddenly kicked from Hypixel. Upon rejoining, he saw the message logged in from another location. He had been hacked. Iceblades was frantically logging in to try keep the hacker off of Hypixel while simultaneously on the Mojang website trying to change his password. But it wasn't enough. The hacker managed to steal many of Iceblades' valuable items and did so without ever having Iceblades' password to begin with. His account was accessed through a session ID exploit. The glitch allowed hackers to log into any Minecraft account without their username or password. As you can imagine, this was incredibly powerful. Hackers could join any server as any account. HBTV, Deadbush, and TimeDio's alt were all hacked this way, and Mojang patched the exploit before more damage was done. On March 7th, Technoblade uploaded the second video in the Potato War Saga. In it, he continued to employ bombastic strategies to decimate I'm a Squid Kid, and one tactic he utilized involved the Rabbit Pet, recently added in the Pets update. Date. Two days after that video dropped, the 0.7.7 Bizarre Patch was released to the game, introducing a new marketplace where a significant amount of Skyblock commerce now occurs. The Bazaar is kind of like a stock market, where players can buy and sell items rather than stocks. The price of every item is dictated based on how much people who own those items are willing to sell them for. This made it so way fewer low-cost items were clogging the auction house, and made it super easy to buy items in bulk. One fascinating experimental item added was called the Stock of Stonks. Initially, these stonks were sold by an NPC named Warren for 200 coins, but that was soon removed. On them, 
item is written might be worth double, 10x, or 100x later on, or nothing, and that they might get deleted. Pretty quickly, the stonks price on the bazaar shot up to be thousands of coins, despite the fact that they were sold for just 200 and have absolutely no use. Stonks basically became Skyblock's version of cryptocurrency, with the starting value of 200 coins each. At the end of the video, we'll see how much a single stock of stonks sells for today. Right after the bazaar was added, Hypixel's player count jumped from 50,000 to 90,000 for a completely unknown reason. Not a single major world event happened in March of 2020 that might have kept people in their homes and allowed them to play significantly more Minecraft than before. I guess Hypixel didn't get the memo that nothing happened because on March 27th, they added a global plus 20% XP boost for lockdown to encourage people to play. Due to everything happening, Skyblock's player count essentially doubled. Two weeks into March, Nolzy uploaded another dirt to valuable weapon video. This time, his challenge was to get from a dirt block to a 50 million coin Midas sword, requiring 46 million coins more than the aspect of the dragons. While Nolzy took the time and effort to earn the coins to buy the sword legitimately, many players were breaking the rules of the server and paying real-life money in exchange for Skyblock coins. Because because of how much of these illicit activities were actually going on, Simon, Hypixel himself, announced a massive IRL trader ban wave. Simon declared that Hypixel had detected more than 10,000 players who had illegally boosted and IRL traded, and those people would soon be banned and wiped from the server. IRL trading took a massive hit from this, as a large portion of the community became scared to engage in the practice. As the next month rolled around, the second pets update dropped. This added 16 new pets to the game, including the Wither Skeleton and Golem pet. The only issue was, those two had the ability to kill other players. To, to your Golem pet, I raise my Wither Skeleton. How does this work? <laughs> I win again. <laughs> Just a couple days later, the first place Frags Guild collapsed. Many of their members were banned and wiped for IRL trading, and the Guildmaster Mindtrix was banned and wiped as well. The rest of FPF scattered to other top guilds, or stuck around as first place Frags rebranded to Lost in Space. That very same day, Jamero was banned, having almost reached the monumental achievement of skill average 50. Jamero, who was allegedly using macros to cheat his way there, got banned with a skill average of 49.14. So close. This immediately sparked outcry on the forums, with users posting campaigns saying, hashtag free Jamero. That didn't work because he was wiped before his ban expired, bringing his skill account average to zero. On May 19th, the auction house was changed to include a buy it now feature, where players can list their items that can be bought instantly. This makes buying and selling your stuff so much easier because you can potentially pay a little extra in order to get the item you want immediately, rather than bid and get outbid. That same day, the Alpha Network opened, a parallel server to Skyblock. With the IP of alpha.hypixel.net available only for players with MVP++, Skyblock Alpha was created for the dedicated player base to test out new updates before they rolled out. Alpha was designed to unearth bugs and exploits, so the admins could fix those before they got to the main server. Anyone who joined Alpha had access to the best items in the game and unlimited money with the giant pile of cash items that were handed out. Essentially, Skyblock Alpha is a sandbox where there's no consequences because everything's disconnected from the main server. At least, that's how it's supposed to work. A player named Voxir decided to purchase 5 trillion coins worth of seeds on the Alpha network bazaar are just to see what would happen. Voxir started freaking out when he saw the seed order was filled by someone who was only VIP rank and didn't have access to Alpha. In some lobbies on Alpha Network, the Alpha Bazaar was connected to the main server's bazaar and this caused mega issues. Because of this, Voxir had unintentionally introduced 5 trillion coins into the main network's Skyblock economy. The admins quickly banned him as well as another 29 players who had done 
the same thing. But Voxir never wanted to cause any damage, and the admins realized that. After looking into each case carefully, 17 of the 30 banned players were unbanned, as there was nothing to indicate they had intended to break the game and abuse the exploit. As the summer came, Hypixel's player count reached new highs, averaging more than 100,000 people on at any given time. Everyone was stuck at home and playing Minecraft all day, while the Skyblock developers worked diligently to improve the game and provide new content. On June 2nd, wardrobes were added, letting players easily switch between all their different armor sets. Two days later, Mystical Mushroom Soup was introduced, allowing anyone to fly on their private islands. This was already possible because of the Magical Mushroom Soup, but the Mystical variety provided a duration 100 times longer. On June 7th, Sacks and the Replenish enchants were added, which made farming notably easier. Using Replenish, players no longer had to manually replant their crops. Replenish also made it easier for macroers to grind out coins to sell for real-life money. Basically, any money-making strategy can be automated by those guys, including mining endstone? Cheaters used bot accounts to nuke endstone, which gave quite a profit due to its use in crafting the new endermite pets. On June 10th, the crab hats of celebration were given out for the one-year anniversary of Skyblock, and a couple weeks later, a player named Linmen reached an incredible milestone. On June 25th, after a tiresome race against his rival, Thoughts, with sleepless nights and countless hours of grinding, Linmen became the first person in all of Skyblock to reach skill average 50. Oh! 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 This was monumental because of how insanely difficult it was to level up skills. Linmen set the bar high for tryhards, putting in an extremely unhealthy amount of time for extra score in a block game. That very same day, the YouTuber Agro got his hands on an Emerald Blade, a weapon which deals more damage the more coins you have in your purse. The Emerald Blade itself wasn't very impressive. What was impressive though was the 5 billion coins he acquired to test it out with. Speaking of people with way too much money, Time Dio spent 1 billion coins on a Midas sword just a day later. It's totally useless to pay anything above 50 million coins for Midas unless you're trying to get views. The YouTuber Dragoon also tested out the Emerald Blade on the Alpha Network using the infinite money there. He learned the blade actually stopped working above 26 billion coins and made a very popular video on that. As July came around, one of the most anticipated anticipated updates in all of Skyblock was finally released, the Dungeon Hub. Well, you couldn't actually do too much in the Dungeon Hub, but the dungeons themselves were rumored to release with 10 floors of increasing difficulty. The dungeons would have different objectives, mob rooms to clear, insanely difficult boss fights, and of course, crazy loot. The first floors of dungeons weren't released for another week, but in the meantime, Skyblock's richest player was banned and wiped, allegedly for IRL trading. So, July 7th, 0.8 patch, the catacombs. The first three floors of dungeons were added in this update, with the bosses Bonzo, Scarf, and the Professor. The loot from these dungeons was very powerful, and the new best set in the game became adaptive armor with a Bonzo staff. The catacombs released with a new skill called Dungeoneering. When your level increases, so does your base health. There's also a bonus, the higher base stats you have, and your gear's bonuses work better too. Two days later, the mod developer Danker released a quality of life dungeons mod, which helped users solve dungeons puzzles. Less than a week after that, Technoblade released the Potato War 3 video. He and Squid Kid agreed to end the war at 500 million potatoes collected, and in that race, Techno unabashedly disintegrated Squid Kid with absolutely no remorse. WE WIN THESE! Once I won the war, there was nothing left to do except celebrate my victory with grace and humility. Oh my gosh! He's doing a little emote on me! Oh my, not like this! Come on, was was this necessary? Watch me dance, Squid Kid! You lose! You lose the war! 
The video now sits at nearly 31 million views and it is a pure masterpiece. Techno farmed 11 hours a day for the entire summer, but he could have done it a lot faster with macros. Of course, he'd never do such a thing, especially as Hypixel was in an ongoing war against macro words. Hypixel added random captures to the game to try to catch people who weren't actually on their computers. Those captures are very similar to the are you a robot quizzes that you sometimes run across on the internet. A human can easily solve them, but a robot? On July 14th, the coder Blitz showcased a sugarcane script that included a live capture solver. Those mods are all illegal, but three days after that, another Skyblock quality of life mod called Not Enough Updates released, created by the coder Mulberry. Not Enough Updates dropped with features such as item prices of everything in your inventory and a dungeons chest profit checker. On the topic of dungeons, floor 4 was added on July 30th. Floor 4 had players fight the boss Thorn, and they could get the new Spirit Scepter and Bone Meringues, items which became the new meta. Right around this time, Time Dio and some other exploiters utilized a glitch with co-ops to create a mega co-op with 30 people. Had the co-op gone to the hub and entered the Colosseum, they'd have been able to fight each other in 1 on 1 or 1 on 30 PvP. That however was changed just a week into August. The Colosseum was entirely disabled and the reason why became clear in September. That revelation occurred in the new community center added on August 13th, but the community center just stood there for nearly a month. Then on September 8th, the 0.9 election and community shop update dropped. Booster cookies, god potions, and tons of other cool perks were added, and they could be purchased using gemstones on the Hypixel store for real money. Booster cookies can be sold for skyblock coins in the bazaar, so Hypixel essentially created legal IRL trading. In order to abide by the Mojang end-user license agreement, Hypixel had to disable any PvP aspects of Skyblock in order to not be considered pay-to-win. As Simon described, the revenue generated from gemstones would be used to double the Skyblock development team and combat IRL trading. One of the items sold in the community center is the God Potion that gives all the effects of a God Splash but is a lot more convenient. This totally destroyed the God Splash economy. Since the community center update also revamped the hub, Time Dio was summoned and quickly released a new and improved Fairy Soul guide. Soon after that, players Leek and the Vincent89 created a Discord server called the Exotic Cafe, a community dedicated to finding and collecting armor pieces, which had been dyed different colors before the patch in late 2019, which made that impossible. These colored pieces, known as as exotics became a massive flex. Nowadays, they're some of the most expensive items in the game. Another feature in the update adding booster cookies was mayors. Mayors are NPCs that Skyblock players can vote for, with different mayors coming with different perks. For example, Diana brings a new event and Paul gives buffs for dungeons. The XP that players grinded during these events could be viewed on SkyLiamo, but the original developer Leofant stepped aside. After that, some friends took over the project, including Shiyu, and the website was changed to sky.shiyu.mo. On August 17th, Floor 5 of Dungeons dropped with the Livid Boss, Shadow Assassin Armor, and the new Livid Dagger weapon. The next day, some trolls abused the glitch which caused the lightning from the unstable dragon armor to kill other players. Close to three weeks after Floor 5 released, the admins dropped Floor 6 with the Sadan Boss who has the chance to drop Necromancer gear. That same day, some more trolls realized they could use the Reaper Scythe, a weapon crafted with one of the rarest drops from the Revenant Horror Slayer boss to kill other players. This was done by spawning in Elder Guardians that would attack people even if they were in the main hub safe zone area. On October 2nd, the tab menu was changed to be more organized, and four days later, Iron Man was brought to the game. Iron Man is a skyblock challenge where players cannot be helped by anyone else, unless those people are in the same Iron Man co-op with them. For Iron Man players, the bazaar, auction house, and trading is disabled. As 
is dropping or picking up items from other people. This is basically a reverse YouTuber situation. YouTubers receive so many donations due to their clout, and Iron Man profiles are the exact opposite. On an Iron Man profile, you have to collect and unlock everything yourself. A couple weeks later, the Builder's Wand was added, making it significantly easier to build massive farms that are infinitely harvestable. Of course, this also made it significantly easier for macroers to create infinite farms themselves, and some cheaters even figured out how to get the bots to build these farms automatically. Bot accounts were getting banned left and right, but the next week, there was a massive ban wave for a very strange reason. There was an illegal command that anyone could type in chat. On Hypixel, most commands are reserved for staff and administrators, but there's some, like slash hub, slash play skyblock, and slash party, that anyone can do. On October 27th, a forum user named Table Chair realized he could do the slash slime test command. This spawned a small slime wherever he was on the server. If he typed slash slime test followed by a number, the number dictated how large the slime would be. Massive slimes will lag lobbies, but colossal slimes are too fat for Hypixel to handle. The lobbies simply crash. When lobbies crash, they often roll back, so if someone has a way to force a lobby to crash, they can actually duplicate items. With slime test, you might as well have given people a command named slash crash. Word of this command spread like wildfire, and the admins had to step in. A couple dozen people were banned for using slime test, and as it turns out, the command had been around since 2016. Slime test caused a lot of damage, but this wasn't the last time that a public command caused so much chaos. In preparation for Halloween, the spooky festival was revamped with new mobs and new loot for trick-or-treating. In line with that, on November 2nd, spooky fishing was also added with new sea creatures and loot. Spooky fishing could only be done during the hours surrounding a spooky festival, but Mindtrix and some of his homies figured out they could fish up spooky mobs at any time if they were fishing in the dungeon's hub. Mindtrix livestreamed himself doing this, which captured him getting year banned for bug abuse. What well, happened? Good knowing you guys. He was the only person there punished for spooky fishing, so the staff might have been out to get him. While these changes affected fishing, a couple days later, an update dropped that changed farming. The farmhouse was added with a new NPC named Jacob. Once an hour, there's a 20 minute farming contest based on who farms the most of some specific crops. These contests give anyone who participates bronze medal, silver medals for the top 25% of participants, and gold for the top 5%. The Winners receive medals and Jacob's tickets that can be used to purchase different farm-related items. This update also raised the max farming level from 50 to 60. The Skyblock developers must have been working their butts off because not even a week later, they released the guesting update, adding the social skill that gives rewards the more XP you get and makes it more interesting for people to visit your island. This update though was totally busted. As soon as it rolled out, people learned they could duplicate duplicate social XP. When that was patched, it didn't take long for others to find duplication glitches with the new showcase block. Alright, three, two, one, go. Wait. And then, on November 17th, Jay of Armin made a forum post for something which was long awaited, the final dungeon's floor. Floor 7 released with the most difficult boss fight to date. Daring Skyblock Sweats faced against Necron, the right-hand man of the Wither King himself. Originally, dungeons was planned to have 10 floors, but the admins decided that it would be best to cut it off at 7 and focus on other aspects of Skyblock, since each floor was more difficult to create than the previous. That same day, the first Floor 7 completion was done by the team of Complex Origin, Linmin, 15H, Strafe, and Heatran. There was actually a glitch that made it possible to get infinite flight using Tarantula Boots, which many dungeon sweats abused to bypass a lot of the parkour. Completing the floor and having a good score gives the best loot, with the new, most powerful gear in the game being crafted with the Wither Armor found in chests. Wither Armor can be crafted 
into one of four sets, Storm, Necron, Maxor, or Golder. Wither armor is dyed black, and for a little while after this update dropped, items crafted with other armor kept the color of their original armor. What I mean by this is rather than turn into a red Necron chestplate or blue Storm, there was a brief period of time where Wither armor could be crafted into Black Storm. Three Black Storm chestplates were created before the bug was patched, and because of their color, they were considered exotic. When Pricks bought one for a billion coins, the price shot through the roof. Later on, Refraction bought another Black Storm chestplate for double that. One of the rarest drops in the game was the Necron's handle, that can be crafted into one of four swords, the Hyperion, Astrea, Scylla, or Valkyrie. No one cares about the Astrea or Scylla, but the Hyperion and Valkyrie became the new meta, but one had to get the items to craft it first. Speed Silver bought the first Necron handle that was ever dropped for 123 million coins and crafted a Valkyrie. He showcased that in a video, and the price of Necron handles jumped to around 400 million. You know how I said Valkyrie became meta? Forget about that too. The Hyperion immediately became the best weapon in the game and exemplifies something called power creep. Power creep is the situation when new content makes the old stuff obsolete. I feel this is an issue Skyblock has been grappling with for quite a while. At one point, superior dragon armor was the best in the game, and now, no one cares about it. The pigman sword? Crazy powerful. Never mind, we have the aspect of the dragons and 50 million Midas swords. Every time new dungeons floors were released, there were new weapons and armor that became the meta, and then were mostly forgotten by the time the next floor came out. Does anyone even remember what a bonzo staff is when you have a Hyperion to do anything? Constant power creep almost requires new updates to keep the game fresh, but the developers might only be able to do that for so long. Speaking of new content required to keep things fresh, in early December, the enchanting skill was totally revamped. Before, in order to max the skill, players had to painstakingly enchant books for hours on end. With the revamp, acquiring enchanting XP became a lot easier and more fun with the addition of different enchanting challenges. The maximum enchanting level was also brought from 50 to 60, making enchanting the second level 60 skill on top of farming. As the end of the year loomed closer, the Skyblock mod Just Enough Dungeons was exposed for being a rat. Just Enough Dungeons was a mod based off of Danker's mod that included code which stole users' session IDs. This allowed the creator access to the accounts of anyone who used it, and he did just that to steal over 6 billion coins worth of items. For reference, the richest player at the time was the YouTuber Akinsoft, who had a total net worth of 16 billion coins. In Skyblock Gems, the amount the Just Enough Dungeons owners stole was worth close to $8,000. The admin Frozen made a forum post stating that anyone who logged in with the Just Enough Dungeons mod would be immediately security banned so as to protect their profiles and items. Supposedly, the guy who did the ratting returned some of the coins, but he was banned and wiped regardless. After some days passed, the new year of 2021 officially arrived. On January 12th, the mayor Jerry was elected, and he inaugurated the Jerry event, where random Jerry's spawned, dropping special items, including the Jerry Sheen Gun that shoots out Jerry heads. The Jerry Sheen Gun actually became the meta in Floor 7 of Dungeons because it could be used to bypass some of the parkour if players blasted off the walls with it. This update also allowed the exploiter Simple Origin to spam villagers and troll various YouTubers. Three days later, the Dwarven Mines were released, bringing the max mining level from 50 to 60, adding a completely new system for breaking blocks. Simultaneously, a massive new section of the Skyblock map was added, the Dwarven Mines. This is an area entirely devoted to mining, where miners can find valuable ores, dwarves, goblins, and other enemies. There was also a new ore called Mithril, and a new progression system surrounding the heart of the mountain. The new mining system is based on mining speed and breaking power, which players can upgrade using Mithril Powder. Different blocks require different breaking power to be mined, and for some reason, Bedrock had a very low breaking power requirement. I, what? Please contact Jay of Armin and explain how on earth you got this item. <laughs> Okay. People went around mining the bedrock on their islands, and Tyler even built a bedrock heart 
on his. In the Dwarven Mines, there are a number of areas where players could abuse AFK features, which is kind of not cool, bro, because it takes loot away from people who are actually playing the game. Consequently, a trend started where players used fishing rods to bring the ghosts from one area to kill the AFK players in another. Menacing Banana made a video doing this, and soon afterwards, Time Dio caught Banana AFKing himself. Due to the laws of karma, it is only right that Dio gave Menacing Banana a taste of his own medicine. While all this was happening, Nolzy started his third and final Dirt to Valuable Weapon series, this time going for the Hyperion. What made this different? Over the past year or so, Nolzy had continuously ramped up the difficulty of these challenges. First, he went for the Aspect of the Dragons, which cost 6 million coins. Then, the Midas, which he bought for 55 million coins, but now was time for the Hyperion. This would require more than half a billion coins. In the first episode, Nolzy collected just a couple million, and we'll check back with him later. Nolzy was once again using auction and bizarre flipping strategies, but some people wanted to abuse this to the extreme. Whenever an update drops, the price of update-related items skyrockets. Because of this, if someone has inside knowledge of an update, they can make extreme profit. Thus, whenever admins make hints about future updates, the price of any items associated with those hints jump up as well. On January 27th, J of Armin tweeted out, the next Skyblock update will really be going to the moon, with a picture of the villager who looked like the NPC named Warren. Warren sold those original stonks all the way back in March of 2020, so it appeared that stonks would finally be getting a use. Well, not really. The account that made this tweet is actually an impersonator of the admin, with the tag J of Vermin. This whole situation was masterminded by some intelligent skyblockers with ambiguous ethics. They had bought tons of stock of stonks and then created the fake J of Armin Twitter account to dry get people to buy stonks. After the tweet was posted in various Discord servers, the schemers were hoping the stonk price would jump up so they could sell their stockpiles. However, it doesn't appear that the price changed very much when this happened, so it looks like this enterprise was a failure. At the start of February, there was a glitch with the Not Enough Updates mod that accidentally enabled fly hacks if a certain command was typed. I have no idea how that happened, but it was removed in the next update which dropped very shortly after. Still, those using that version may have gotten banned, and tons of people stopped trusting not enough updates and decided to use other mods instead. That same day, someone bought an Optifine cape for a goblin, which ignited a situation of people finding which Minecraft accounts were linked to the skins of different mobs on Skyblock, and then buying Optifine capes for them to spread messages. One player even bought a Pakistani flag for the Minotaur mobs, and as a result, every Minotaur on the server displayed a Pakistani flag for all players using Optifine. With so many game-breaking exploits such as that one just waiting to be discovered, Time Dio created a squad called the PQA, or Player Quality Assurance Team, which is essentially the Avengers of glitch hunting. They challenge themselves to find and report as many game-breaking exploits as possible in a single week. When that week passed, the PQA unearthed 20 terrifyingly dangerous glitches. As a thank you from the admins, the PQA was awarded a Game Annihilator, a mega version of the Game Breakers that have been given out for finding exploits. The admins updated the game, fixing those exploits, and they also improved farming on February 16th. Two days later, the PQA discovered a collection dupe involving grass. On a different note, after the first place frags guild fell apart, Mind Tricks had created another guild called Necron. Towards the end of 2020, like first place frags, Necron became notorious for harboring cheaters, macroers, and bug abusers. One member named Isa was macroing when the admin Plank joined his island and messaged him, you there? Isa was not there, and he was subsequently banned. Speaking of cheaters, a player named Hail9 created a client to automatically solve one of the most annoying parts of dungeons, called terminals. He released it with a bunch of other features, including macros that cycle through bone burings. Hail9's client ushered in a new era of cheating. New dungeons cheating clients started popping up left and right. 
Just around that time, on February 20th, Akinsoft quit the game. He left behind a YouTube channel with over 100,000 subscribers and tens of thousands of followers on Twitch. Before he walked away from Skyblock entirely, Akinsoft liquidated as much of his wealth as he could, roughly 10 billion coins, and bought nothing but booster cookies, increasing the price from 1.6 million per to 2.6 million per. Once all his coins were spent, he deleted his profile. The amount of booster cookies Akinsoft bot has an equivalent value of $4,000 in real life. All of that to go out with a bang. A couple weeks later, the admins rolled out an update that revamped the spider's den and added a quality of life item called the personal deleter. The personal deleter lets users put in any kind of useless item they want to be automatically deleted from their inventory. Unfortunately, the item was glitched and it could be used to delete the most valuable items in the game. All that was needed was to put in the base equivalent of any expensive item, such as a gold sword to delete a 50 million Midas, or an iron sword to delete a Hyperion. Some not super kind people went around with personal deleters filled with iron swords and dropped them on different rich skyblock sweats hanging out in the hubs. Of course, the moment those people picked up the deleters, their Hyperions got poofed. The game is not fun. Less than two weeks after that big instance of trolling, the YouTuber Duper Trooper uploaded a video where he did a little trolling himself. Duper Trooper distributed 8 billion coins of duped enchanted diamond blocks in the hubs, blocks which may have been generated with a lobby crash dupe done with overloaded backpack data. That's something which the admin soon fixed. In doing so, backpacks started accidentally deleting items, which was also soon fixed. The admins addressed a different type of cheating on March 26th, that being things like Hail 9 and other dungeons cheating clients. The admin Frozen made a forum post on the topic of disallowed modifications, and this was met with public outcry. Frozen got absolutely ratioed with 586 likes and 763 dislikes because of the way the post was worded. Frozen made it seem that many legit mods like Skyblock add-ons would become bannable. Banning SBA and other legit mods would be a quality life update that only makes quality worse. With this forum flame war raging, Don Piresso made a post the next day, making it clear that the Hypixel staff was specifically targeting cheating features, not stuff that normally be found in SBA. People seem pretty pleased with this since Don Piresso's clarification had only 8 dislikes and 1,100 likes. Since it was clear that the dungeon's hackers were at risk, some new cheats were developed to be less blatant, such as dungeon maps that show where different rooms are. On the topic of potentially controversial Skyblock forum posts, Jay of Armin made an announcement regarding some incoming balancing changes on that very same day. This post detailed how the developers plan to nerf and buff certain items, and woof, this stirred up a storm. Because of what Jay of Armin proposed, changes which hadn't even been added yet, everyone and their mama was out there protesting. People joined the Skyblock hubs, shooting Jerry Sheen guns, throwing snowballs, fishing rods, anything to lag the lobbies. These events were labeled the hub riots. I still don't really understand why everyone was so mad. Maybe they didn't want their weapons nerfed? To be fair, nerfed weapons would definitely make the game more difficult with the master mode of dungeons released just a couple days later. In this update, floors 1 through 5 were released as master modes. They had the same layout, enemies, and boss fights as before, but the difficulty was ramped up to an incredible degree. Agree. Since these weren't new floors, there weren't any new items added, but the catacombs experience that people gained by playing them was drastically increased. The drop rates of different loot was also increased. When the mayor Derpy was elected, Skyblock players had mixed feelings. On the one hand, two of Derpy's perks give crazy buffs to players, while the others hurt them. When Derpy is mayor, minions have double output, the auction house is closed, all mobs have double health, and skill XP is increased by 50%. Derpy seems pretty chaotic, and a while later, the ballot had a name which had never been seen before, Dante. Dante ran on vague promises. He vowed to bring order, security, and freedom. It sounded like Dante wanted to say he brought peace, freedom, justice, and security to my new empire. 
Your new empire? Well, the Skyblock community didn't heed the warnings of Revenge of the Sith, and Dante won the election by a landslide. When Dante was sworn into office, he made some changes. Double AH and bazaar tax, 10% coin tax on shops, 5 coins per minute for chatting, 2 coin toll on traveling between islands. He also hired goons to harass people. When the next election rolled around 5 days later, Dante was the only candidate that anyone could vote for. With Dante now in absolute control, a pre Previous mayor, Seraphine, instructed people to seek out a hidden location to find the resistance. Players ventured to the site of the dark auction, wherein they could vote any person they wanted to become the new mayor. For the first time, Skyblock players themselves could be voted mayor. YouTubers started campaigning, but someone named 2NFG thought it'd be really funny if he got elected. 2NFG teamed up with the text-to-speech documentarian I go by lots of names to try win the election. A lot of 2NFG's friends changed their names to different variations of vote to NFG. In floor 4 of the dungeons, whenever someone throws a spirit bow, everyone in the lobby is notified with a banner on their screen. These spirit bows were glitched out of dungeons, and so people named vote to NFG spammed the spirit bow, and this made everyone see the message vote to NFG. Even with their elaborate methods of securing votes, one name rose to the top. Technoblade. Against Techno, no one stood a chance. So, Technoblade returned to Skyblock. By this point, the situation was dire. Dante had deleted all the events. Leading up to the uprising, Dante banned dungeons, pets, the dwarven mines, the auction house and bazaar, and even traveling between islands. Technoblade, as leader of the resistance, fought Dante alongside five generals. Swavy, Time Dio, 30 Virus, Tyler, and Refraction. 2NFG also had enough votes, but he was banned during this whole ordeal, so Hypixel put him in jail. On April 16th, Dante transformed into a giant slime. Anatomically, I have no idea how that's possible, but perhaps it's similar to how Christian Bale gained £450,000 to play the Sandworm in the Dune remake. Technoblade livestreamed himself facing off against Dante, and Hypixel hit an all-time record of 216,670 players online at a single moment. Insane. With so many people online, the fight against Dante was super laggy. When he had about a third of his health remaining, Dante totally disappeared, losing 3.6 billion health in a single moment. Is it possible to learn this power? Yes, it was done because one player typed exactly 10 characters on the keyboard, slash kill Dante. Like slime test, this was another command that was supposed to be reserved for the admins and was somehow made public. With the resistance victorious, Technoblade became the new mayor and shiny pigs spawned around the hub. These pigs gave shiny orbs, which had a 1 in 20 million chance to drop a shiny pig relic. Once all 7 of these relics were found, they were deposited at the blood god shrine to summon and the ancient pig. The players who found the shiny relics got to keep them, but they've had an unfortunate history. One is stuck in an Iron Man profile, so it can't be traded. Four of them were wiped when someone tried to collect them all, leaving just two more. One was scammed, and the last is in a museum forever. In the middle of Dante's reign, the exploit hunter Treox teamed up with Dafti to abuse some glitched backpacks. Treox joined Skyblock on a new account named Diesel, duplicated a trillion coins, and bought out the entire bazaar and auction house. He was banned and wiped, and the admins disabled backpacks because of him. Backpacks remained disabled for over two weeks, so if anyone had any items in them, they were unable to access them. The admins were forced to reimagine everything about backpacks, so on April 20th, Don Pereso posted about the new backpack and storage system. Soon afterwards, people's accessory bags started getting wiped. On the 23rd, Skyblock actually shut down completely while the admins sorted that out, and they pretty quickly reopened the game. Right after the new storage system, Don Pireso posted about Floor 6 of Dungeons Master Mode, which came with a revamp to the farming island. This brought four new reforged stones, three of which were found on the first day of the update. The last was called the Golden Ball, and its discovery remained a mystery. Three weeks later, the admin Deuces tweeted out, Since its release in the 0.11.4 update, only one person has figured out how to obtain the Golden Ball. The search was on. Deuces joined the 
the game and gave some clues, and a community sprung up dedicated to finding this golden ball. Tons of different strange ideas were tested, like using Super Boom TNT to explode trees and bringing different offerings to the farm NPCs. One player named Ari the Monkey set up a bounty system where different people contributed. Whoever found the golden ball and shared the method would receive 587 million coins. On May 14th, Deuces tweeted, On the forums, there's a giant list of things that have been tried. Looking at that list and then at our own internal stats, I can say that some things that are marked as tried slash tested have not actually been tried. An hour later, Aspect of the Aya put up the first golden ball on the auction house, but didn't share the method. Minutes later, Dajah and Casterboy both found and posted the method within seconds of each other. The three of them split the prize. The reforged stone was given out by an NPC named Jake, if a sea emperor was brought to him. This was quite difficult to do, and a number of people tried it and marked it as impossible. Deuces ended the hunt thanking everyone who participated, but this golden ball hunt was nothing compared to the year-long search for the Kudra Mandible that was launched almost exactly 12 months later. The next month, a new dungeons cheat called Terminal Aura released to some clients. Terminal Aura automatically solved terminals, even without the need for any player input. Of course, this was pretty blatant and got some people banned. On Skyblock, one of the mayoral candidates that the community can elect is called Marina, who is themed around fishing. Marina is supposedly the most simp for mayor, and on May 22nd, Atree ATR posted a fan art of Marina on the Hypixel Skyblock subreddit. ATR then teased that there was another, less school-appropriate version of that same image. Well, of course, the immature teenagers that make up the Skyblock community went crazy, and so ATR said she'd give the unredacted image to whoever had the highest bid on the fishing rod that she put up on her auction house. It then sold for 2.147 billion coins. The auction house physically could not process any more money. This ignited a trend of other people making marina-style art, and I will not go into any further detail on this topic. In other news, on the last day of the month, a new Slayer boss was released called the Void Gloom Seraph, based on Enderman. This was introduced with a new area called the Void Sepulcher and was a big challenge. These Slayers drop the materials to craft the Juju Shortbow, which is very useful for early and mid-game players. At the highest level, Tier 4 Enderman Slayers have an incredibly small chance of dropping a Judgment Core, which is used to craft the Terminator. The Terminator is the strongest bow in the game and is essential for the more difficult dungeon's floors. One might think that Hypixel's player count would be pretty high with everyone now home for the summer, and that was generally true except for this massive gap. On June 17th, Hypixel went into emergency maintenance as it was hit by a massive DDoS attack that took down the entire server. More than 100,000 players were unable to log into Hypixel, and the server remained closed for nearly a week. Skyblock didn't come back online until June 23rd. In order to compensate players, the server rolled out a double Skyblock skill XP event, which someone named Deathstreaks definitely took advantage of. When Dungeons released the Dungeoneering or Catacomb skill, Dungeon Sweat started grinding for the top. Deathstreaks was one such sweat, and he raced against a player named Egom to become the first person to reach the max Catacombs level 50. Nearly a year after Dungeons released, Deathstreaks became the first Cat of 50 player on June 26th. It's done! You've reached the max level for this dungeon. He was certainly taking advantage of the double skill XP for those last few runs. A couple weeks later, the 0.12 Crystal Hallows update released, which was kind of like a part two to the Dwarven Mines update. New drills were added as well as gemstones. Gemstones can be mined and upgraded into higher tiers, with the highest being perfect gemstones, selling for over 10 million coins each. The new gemstone gauntlet, basically the Thanos Infinity Gauntlet in Skyblock, requires a lot of rubies to craft as well as a high level. A smart individual named Hutayo decided to crowdsource the gathering of those materials, where he'd then buy them, craft the gauntlets, and sell them for profit. Since Hutayo was one of the few players who actually had the ability to craft the gauntlets, he made quite the pretty penny. In fact, Hutayo estimates he crafted close to 3,000 gauntlets and profited 45 billion coins. Less than two months after Deathstreaks reached Catacombs 50, Refraction was in the race to become the first YouTuber to hit that same milestone. He was up against another player named Dreop, but they had different objectives. Refraction
Christian was trying to get Kata 50, and Driop, who already had Kata 50, was trying to get YouTube rank. YouTube rank is given at 30,000 subscribers, which Driop got to right as Refraction was closing in the last levels. The last run, floor seven, my darling Necron, I'm coming to kiss you on the lips, brother. Give me that Catacombs XP, dude. And Refraction managed to take the dub as the first red name Kata 50. It's taken so long, dude. Catacombs level 50, baby. And Driop was given his red name just five hours later. On August 13th, the admins finally disabled item dropping for good. After this update, the only way players who aren't in the same co-op can transfer items to each other is through the trade menu, auction house, or bazaar. Each of those transfer methods has logs, which makes it much easier for Hypixel to track IRL trading and boosting. Almost exactly a month after this, the community came together to help Hellcastle, one of Skyblock's best YouTubers. Hellcastle lived in Lebanon with his family when he started grinding out Skyblock videos with his friend Tyler. When everything shut down for no reason at all, Hellcastle's income from YouTube became the only thing keeping his family afloat. He had enough electricity and Wi-Fi to upload high-quality videos daily for almost six months straight, but at some point, the electricity and Wi-Fi was shut off. Hellcastle, in a pit of despair, posted how he was feeling on Twitter. In response, he received an outpouring of support from all across the community, and 30Virus set up a GoFundMe on his behalf. 30 named it the Hellcastle Better Life Fund and raised over $10,000 in a week. Hellcastle was able to move his family out of Lebanon to Turkey, where he has access to crazy things like electricity for more than six hours a day, internet speed faster than five megabits, and food that isn't rotten because there is no proper refrigeration. The community rallied around aiding Hellcastle and it's heartwarming to see. Since moving to Turkey, Hellcastle and Tyler have continued to upload top quality documentary videos. One thing he's covered is the history of dungeons cheating. Just a week after everything with Hellcastle went down, another dungeons client called Oringo released with cheats, such as Secret Aura that automatically found the secrets needed to complete a dungeon, as well as Auto Blood Room, which automatically clears the Blood Room. These cheating clients were popping up everywhere, aiding players in the goal Technoblade described so long ago to not play the game. These cheats brought that reality one step closer. On October 6th, the price of gemstones crashed because dupers pumped tons and tons of them into the economy. This was done with a lobby crash dupe using the replay menu. These gemstone crashes are actually not super rare as they're Skyblock's most expensive stackable item and, and are able to be sold to the bazaar. Just three days after this gemstone crash, Nolzy completed the Dirt to Hyperion challenge after five episodes and nine months. It cost him 553 million coins to buy everything he needed to craft the sword. That is dedication right there. On October 13th, a small patch was released that added a check for blacklisted items, which made it so that creating and trading glitched items was significantly more difficult. This was a massive blow to the glitch hunting community because tons of exploit hunters keep illegal items showcased in museums on their islands and love to buy, sell, and trade them. However, Skyblock soon released its own, more official museum system. That update dropped on November 2nd, which was the first update in months. The frequency of major additions to the game like this one was decreasing. Anyway, the museum is a place where people can put their items on display. When someone puts items into their museum, it locks those items to the profile or co-op so they can no longer be traded. For instance, 2NFG effectively voided 50 billion coins worth of exotics by putting them in his museum. The museum calculates the worth of everything inside it, so people are able to flex on each other based on the total net worth of their museum. Another feature that allows people to flex on each other is the tag that shows when the items were created. So you have tons of bragging rights if you have the first Hyperion, for instance. Higher museum net worth also allows access to new bank upgrades, with the max letting players store as many as 60 billion coins in there at a time. On December 1st, Hypixel released the Bingo event, a recurring event that happens at the beginning of each month. Players can choose to go onto a temporary profile with Iron Man rules, so no trading, no auction house, and no bazaar. While playing bingo, you're tasked with completing certain challenges like storing a million coins in the bank or getting 500 health points. There are also collective goals like killing 100,000 zealots that are a combination of everyone in the community who's playing bingo. Different cards happen at the beginning 
beginning of every month, so it provides some extra fun for people who want to try that out. Not too long after this, 30virus made a Twitter post saying, Imagine to celebrate coming back to Hypixel Skyblock, I go straight into a new profile and try to get like 100 million coins in a week. Simon responded to this and bet $35,000 he couldn't do it. After five days of grinding, mainly summoning eyes, 30 achieved the goal with time to spare. There it is! A hundred billion! As the new year of 2022 came, Hypixel released Skyblock Stranded Mode, Iron Man rules where you cannot leave your island, the goal being to unlock all collections. Towards the end of the month, there was a method using snowballs to instantly kill dragons. This was done with a hacked client and weapon swapping. Essentially, the stats of the weapon got transferred into each snowball shot, killing the dragon in milliseconds. This was quickly fixed, but something that took a while to be fixed was what the admins called extremely large farms. Eight months before, the YouTuber something like that created an insane cactus farm that generated 50 million coins per day, totally AFK. In February, the admins fixed this after he and other players had a long opportunity to make billions of coins. After his farm was made unusable, something like that found a workaround. And this new farm generated 130 million coins per day, totally AFK. That's almost a billion coins a week, or 18 50 million coin Midases, while barely doing anything. Speaking of 50 mil Midas, the meme YouTuber by that same name was banned for IRL trading less than two weeks later. Word on the street is that Midas bought exotics with real life money, which is a big no-no on Hypixel. On March 1st, Master Mode 7 of Dungeons was released, the most difficult version of the most difficult floor. Floor 7 itself was changed and the boss section was extended. Because the admins made 7 dungeons floors instead of 10, they added the boss mechanics from floors 8, 9, and 10 to Necron. This also meant that floor 7 took longer to complete, but gave a lot more catacombs XP as a result. When this update dropped, the glitch that caused armor pieces to keep their color returned. Black Storm armor, the rarest variety, was worth tens of billions of coins. With the glitch back Back in the game though, more than 50 new sets of Blackstorm were created, and the price of Blackstorm plummeted. If the exotic community wasn't hurt enough, this same update brought another feature, rare dyes. These are dyes that can change the color of armor, and exotic collectors thought the dyes would crash the price of their items. This turned out not to be the case because of how rare the dyes were to collect, and the fact that they only come in specific colors. Exotics are now more valuable than ever. The next month, the crypt Crimson Isle was released with the new Blaze Slayer boss. In this update, the Blazing Fortress was totally changed to a massive volcano area with new enemies and tons of new content. Players can choose to join either the Mage or Barbarian faction and go on daily missions. The Magma boss was reworked and a new final boss was added, the Lava Kraken Kudra. Kudra has several tiers, each more difficult than the previous. This update also added tons of new items and gear to the game, all from the revamp Blazing Fortress. When the Crimson Isle released, the admin Deuces, who was behind the hunt for the Golden Ball, wrote, There is a hunt-esque thing in the nether. Yes, it's hard. No, I'm not giving any hints. Earlier, regarding this hunt, Deuces said, You're going to need a PhD to figure it out. This mystery would not be solved for a full year. On the evening of June 5th, the exploiter Dafty duped an astronomical amount of gemstones, and then sent messages around in top guilds and discord servers, telling people to place buy orders for gemstones. Normally, rich skyblock players can profit immensely whenever the price of items drop due to dupe glitches if they already have buy orders set in the bazaar. Dafty wanted people to place buy orders so he could get those coins because even though he had an insane amount of gemstones, he still needed people to sell them to. So he did, crashing the market. But Dafty very strategically chose when he was going to do this crash. Midnight on the eve of a national British holiday. It took 20 minutes for the admins to close the auction house and bazaar, but the damage was done. Trillions of coins of gemstones were pumped into the economy, and hundreds of players walked away with billions of coins of profit. But that's not where the chaos ends. With so many people now having these illegal items, there was no way the admins could ban them all. Except the admins did. They banned them all. Every single person who profited from Dafty's dupe venture was banned and wiped, each time destroying thousands of hours of progress. This event was dubbed the Great Gem gemstone massacre because of the sheer magnitude of the consequences, all because of one man. 
Skyrim. On June 10th, the three-year anniversary of Skyblock rolled around, and players were given a 2022 edition of the Crab Hats of Celebration. At the end of the month, Technoblade's father posted a heartbreaking video on his channel titled So Long Nerds. In it, Techno's dad read a message from Technoblade and announced that Techno had tragically passed away at the age of 23 with a rare type of bone cancer. When Techno first announced his illness, he started a Minecrafters vs. Cancer charity which has now raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Technoblade had a profound effect on Skyblock and Minecraft as a whole. He brought joy to tens of millions of people with his genius storytelling, wicked sense of humor, and crazy high IQ plays. He was the best of us, and he continues to be missed to this day. When the news broke, the Skyblock community went to the hubs, tossed potatoes in his memory as the Potato King, and saluted their goodbyes. It feels wrong to so casually transition back to random Skyblock history after such a devastating event. Forgive me, I mean to do this with the utmost respect. At the end of July, the amount of coins one can bid on an auction was increased from the integer limit of 2.147 billion all the way up to 10 billion because some items were getting to be worth that much. A couple weeks later, update 0.14 dropped with the Shins auction and Hex, the first major update in about three months. The Hex is a way for players to enchant anything to its max level while automatically buying what's required from the bazaar. On the other hand, the Shins auction is an underground auction which which sells unique items like the Artifact of Control, the Pandora's Box which gives quests, and Shen's Regalia, all targeted towards endgame players. By this point, Skyblock updates had been slowing down for a while now. After almost two more months, Skyblock levels were released, and three weeks after that, the Kudra boss from the Crimson Fortress had extra stages added. The Spider's Den was also changed a bit to make fighting Arachnids easier, while Refraction and Swavy continued to go head-to-head -head in a battle for who could have the highest net worth. Towards the end of the month, a dungeon's client released that had 100% auto routing. That was incredibly blatant and made it so that people didn't have to play dungeons at all. At the start of December, the Skyblock Winter Island was revamped, adding a new advent calendar for the days leading up to Christmas, a holiday event shop, new winter sea creatures, and the Glacial Clave area. A week after that, new tiers were added to the Kudra boss as well as the Crimson Essence shop. One year after Simon challenged, challenged 30 virus to get 100 million coins in a single week, something like that uploaded a video where he challenged himself to get a billion coins in half that time. Proportionally speaking, this challenge was worth $100,000. With an intricate system of whale bait crafting and insane dedication, something like that managed to actually achieve this billion coin challenge in just under four days. As Skyblock moved into 2023, the leveling system was updated again as was the main menu. In mid-February, the garden was added, which is a completely new system oriented around farming. For each player, an NPC spawns on their island that will warp them to the garden and tasks them to clean their plot. After that, players can easily order farms of all types to be built, making it super simple to make farms that can be harvested infinitely. After some more achievements were added to the game in late March, the NPC sell price of all crops was significantly increased. Suddenly, farming became the most profitable activity in Skyblock, and this generated trillions of coins out of thin air. One strategy involved using a flying pig pet to break dozens of crops a second and make over 30 million coins an hour. Inflation isn't something that Minecraft gamers usually have to think about, but the garden was causing it. The price of tons of items were rising precipitously because of how many coins were being brought into the game. On Skyblock, selling items to NPCs creates those coins from nothing, whereas selling Selling stuff to the bazaar or auction house only moves coins between the hands of players. There are some areas where coins are removed from the game, like dungeons chests. Looting a dungeon chest requires paying a certain amount, and another big way coins are removed is through the fees with using the auction house and bazaar. Since the number of coins added to the game was much greater than the coins taken away from it, Skyblock was experiencing severe inflation. For reference, the stock of stonks item which was sold for just 200 coins back 
in 2020 jumped in value to be worth over 7 million coins. While all this was happening, several controversial changes were brought to the garden. First, in February, the max height was brought down from 50 blocks to 10. This was done to preserve storage space for Hypixel, but made it very difficult to have multi-layered farms. This also ruined vertical farms, designed so people could drop down onto a lower layer as soon as they finished one. When this update nerf occurred, the forums were livid. Horrible update in my opinion. Ain't no way. 17 likes. Bruh. 18 likes. A couple months later, teleport pads were also removed so as to promote a more active game experience. This made it very difficult to semi-AFK farming, which was quite infuriating. I love destroying semi-AFK farms and making farming unbearable. Yes I do. Mm-hmm. L update. Holy. You just killed farming. Congrats. April Fools was 51 days ago. Honestly, I think I think MI-2607 said it best. Balls. Even though these updates were controversial, they were not reverted. With all that in mind, at the end of May, the admins finally addressed inflation. On the forums, the Hypixel team outlined three changes aimed to reduce the inflation that was happening. Firstly, the NPC sell price of farm items was nerfed to decrease the number of coins generated from nothing. Secondly, the price of dungeons chest was increased, as was the drop chance of certain valuable loot like Necron handles. This would hopefully increase the number of coins getting removed from the game. Finally, auction fees were slightly increased for items listed over 10 million coins. Each of these changes was actually successful and inflation is now no longer as much of an issue. During the midst of all this inflation though, Pigacult, with help from thousands of other players, finally solved the mystery which involved the evolution of life, complex math formulas, and even time travel. Pigacult spent close to an hour documenting the complex nature of the hunt, so you can watch that video instead of me explaining it. He was successful in acquiring the Kudra Mandible, but in his video, he basically said maybe the real Kudra Mandible was the friends we made along the way. On June 20th, the long-awaited Rift update finally released. The Rift is an alternate dimension that is accessed through the portal in the Wizard Tower. You're unable to bring your normal items into the Rift and cannot take most of the items out of the Rift either. A bit before the Rift opened up though, Hypixel celebrated four years of Skyblock with a cinematic video aptly titled Four Years of Hypixel Skyblock. Almost half a decade later, and here we are. I asked some potentially familiar voices one simple question. What does Hypixel Skyblock mean to you? For a lot of people, Hypixel Skyblock is the last bastion for Java Minecraft. If Skyblock fails, that's it. Skyblock just feels like what should have happened to the base game over the years. To me, Hypixel Skyblock is just opening up Minecraft and having fun, whether it's only for like 15 minutes or if you want to play for 8 hours of that day. It's a good game that you could just pick up and put it back down as you please. Something I really like about Skyblock is the social aspect of it. How you interact with other players, whether you're playing with them in dungeons, or doing things in the economy with them, like the auction house, trading, bazaar. It's a pretty social game, which I like. And overall, out of all the game modes in Minecraft I could be a content creator for, I'm pretty happy at Skyblock. For me personally, it's always felt like Skyblock is a home of some sort that I always just end up going back to eventually. Like, lately I've been taking a little break from Skyblock and just playing many other games, but then admins will drop a new update and I'm like, ooh, that's cool, I wanna check it out. And there goes an entire week or two doing nothing but playing Skyblock. And I'm all for it, honestly. And with that, if you somehow haven't gotten sick of my voice, you can watch the complete history of The Pit, the oldest anarchy game on Hypixel.